my purple banditos, and welcome back to more Let's Play Pokemon Heart Gold. I'm Purple Rodri. In the last episode, we defeated the champion Lance, and with that, took back our crown, and once again became the Johto Region Champion. In today's episode, we are actually going to be taking care of a couple events, which you can't do until after you have defeated Red on top of Mount Silver. As you guys know, Red is our final battle, so I have gone ahead and arranged a couple things so we can actually take care of these events beforehand. Now, we have two open slots in our team because we are actually going to be getting the Kanto and Hoenn starters that you can get after defeating Red. The first one is here in Oak's Lab, so let's go ahead and walk in. Hello, Rodri. Good to see you. I heard a lot about you. Your Pokedex must be close to complete. For all your hard work, I would like to give you something. Haha! <laughs> What's behind me? You must have figured it out right away. Yes, it is a Pokemon. You don't see them very often in Kanto. Choose one, it'll be yours. Go ahead. So he gives us the choice of selecting one of the Kanto starters. As you saw, that was Charmander. This is Bulbasaur, the grass type, but we are actually going to be going with the one in the middle, which is Squirtle. Yes, that's who we're going to get. So we received Squirtle from Professor Oak. I am going to give it a nickname, as you guys know. Now, this is a nickname that has been highly suggested by you guys from the very beginning. So I thought, you know, what more of a perfect time than to give it to one of these really cool starters. So we're going to go ahead and call it Cora. There we go. So welcome to the team, Cora. Glad to have you. And yes, that's what we're going to nickname it. If a wild Pokemon appears, your Pokemon... Yes, I think we know this, Oak. Yes, yes, you old man. I know you don't pay attention very often. Okay, so now that we've gone ahead and gotten this starter, we actually can fly off to Saffron City to get the Hoenn starter from Steven. That's how you do this. You get the Kanto from Oak, you get the Hoenn from Steven. So let's go ahead and fly over there. Hope you guys are having a nice day. I know that I am classes started recently, you know. Think things are going fast once again, and another year, a school year, is upon us. Okay, let's walk inside of this place and let's find where this Steven guy is. Hello, you're breaking up. I think it depends on how my dad feels. I see. I'll be on my way. See you soon. You are I remember your eyes. When I see a trainer whose eyes twinkle, I always remember. You have Pokedex, so you're also in search of Pokemon. Let me see. I think I can help you with that. Let's say that you have stones in front of you. Which color would you pick? Okay, so we can select the green stone, the red stone, or the blue stone. I'm gonna go with the green stone. We already have our Zuko, which is a fire starter, our Korra, which is a water starter, so why not get ourselves a grass? I also have another cool nickname for this Trico, and it's gonna be another one of those little things uh, called Bolin. So there we go. Welcome to the team, Bolin. You did a great job naming it. Take good care of it. You're caring for it will make me very happy. Well, that's all we want to do is make Steven happy, so we're going to have to raise it quite nicely. Okay, cool. So we've gone ahead and gotten these two. Now, in order for us to be able to do the next series of events, which we're going to do, you have to get these starters first from Oak and Steven. So that's why I went ahead and got these beforehand. Also, they're, they're pretty dang cool, and why not have more starters? The more the merrier. I'm going to go ahead and switch up my team a little bit, and then I'll be back with you guys in a couple seconds. All right, so I've mixed up my team now. We are actually going to need a little bit of surf and a little bit of rock climb, and that's why I brought back Stripes, in order for us to go and catch Kyogre, Groudon, and Rayquaza. Those are the three remaining legendary Pokemon in this game. Now, we're here in Cherry Grove City, uh, because if you guys remember, there was a certain guy we met around here called Mr. Pokemon. Now, we actually have to go and find Mr. Pokemon in his house once again in order to get a special item which will allow us to go after Kyogre. Now, in Heart Gold, you go after Kyogre. In Soul Silver, I'm pretty sure you go after Groudon. So, you know, you have to pick a choose, basically. Uh, let's talk to him. Hi, Rodri! I have something I want you to have, and was just about to send an email to Professor Oak. The thing is, a friend of mine from Hoenn came over to give this to me. So we obtained the blue orb. There we go. The blue orb is what is going to allow us to catch Kyogre. That orb has something to do with ancient ruins located past Sinewood City, called the Embedded Tower. But only a handful of trainers can get there. That's where you come in. Professor Oak thinks highly of you, and you are the proud champion after all. I'm sure you can solve the mystery of the orb and the secret of the ruins. 
All right, so there is something mysterious happening in the secret ruins. Uh, so we are gonna make our way back to Sinewood City now with our little team and see if we can figure out what this mystery is all about. I think it's very cool that you can actually have the chance to catch these legendaries, these Hoenn legendaries, which is pretty dang cool. Also, I think the friend who gave Mr. Pokemon the blue orb is actually Steven. Uh, I mean, who else would it be? A friend from Hoenn who's got some mysterious orb? You know, none other than our buddy Steven. Oh, well, let's walk inside here, and hey, it's uh, good old Chuck. Hey, Rodri, good to see you again. But I never expected to see you around here. Could it be that you are on the way to the Embedded Tower? The Embedded Tower is a huge tower piercing the sky. It is said to have something to do with a mythical Pokemon that stretched the seas and that Pokemon that widened the lands. But the tower no longer is standing. The weight of the embedded tower is harder than you can imagine. You need to use rock climb as well as surf. I see, so you've defeated all the gym leaders in Kanto as well. Then there's nothing to worry about. Believe in yourself and walk your path. Yeah ha ha. Cool, so let's go ahead and make our way up here then and start making our way to the embedded tower. We are on an adventure once again, and it feels good to be back out there with our team after having battled so dang much. It looks like there's a trainer up ahead. I'm gonna try to get to it, but we're most likely going to end up... Blah, blah. Yep, battling it. Alright, easy does it. That wasn't too hard at all. Let's continue making our way through this place. It's kind of cool how big of an area this actually is. Now, I'm pretty sure if you take that ladder up, it takes you to the Safari Zone. But we're going to take it down here, and let's just keep walking through and trying to make our way to the Embedded Tower as fast as possible without bumping into any crazy Pokemon who are going to give us some serious damage. Alright, let's get on the surf, and it seems like Stripes hasn't been out on our team in a while. You know, it's kind of weird, but it feels good to, you know, switch up our team members once again. Now, I think it is here to the left, if I'm correct. Yes, there is the little rock climbing area. That's how you'll know. Uh, you have to surf to this rock climbing looking thing and from here you know that you know you'll be reaching the entrance of the embedded tower let's go ahead and climb up with our Zuko it's pretty cool I was actually thinking about this how the rock climb thing looks Zuko actually climbs up like how much cooler than that can it get and there's some weird guy here well hello it said that the past this hole used to be a huge tower reaching far into the sky they say that it was rather a strange tower with half of it embedded into a cliff it was not just a tall tower reaching up to the sky but also reaching deep underground all right, so this guy is telling us about these ruins, this this tower that come that brought together the sky, land, and the ocean. So let's walk in, and we are inside of the embedded tower. Now I see a Pokemon up there. I'm gonna save, and we'll be back in two seconds. All right, guys. So I've gone ahead and saved. We are ready to do this. Here we go, Rodri versus Kyogre. This is the first legendary of Hoenn we will be taking on. Kyogre is level 50. As you can see, I went ahead and put Aqui up in front. We're going to mix things up a little bit. Now, I know that Kyogre is a water type, and that is a very, very strong Pokemon. So I have a little bit of strategy in mind here. I'm thinking if we can put it to sleep, get some serious damage on it, we should be able to, you know, lower its health without giving it too much crazy damage, and then, you know, hopefully be able to catch it. Uh, in a very very easy manner all right i'm gonna go ahead and actually switch out the Sokka now i've landed the yawn so i'm thinking that maybe Sokka will be able to you know uh, lower it without putting too much damage on it now that's the thing i'm most scared of when catching these legendary pokemons it's that you know i might over hit and actually ko them and then all your efforts go to waste and you have to start once again all right let's go ahead and do this then i'm gonna go for the aerial ace I'm thinking that the Aerial Ace will probably work nicely uh, to lowering it. That actually did about a third damage, so it's not too bad. Um, I don't know. Maybe we'll be able to get it in the red zone without too much trouble. That's what I'm hoping for, at least. And I guess we'll figure it out as we get this battle on the road. Let's throw out the Brick Break out there. The Brick Break Brackety Brackety Brick Brackety. And let's see how much damage that is going to do. Don't KO it. Okay, we got it red zoned. Wow, that was... Uh, that was actually pretty good, but now I don't have anyone that can lower it a whole bunch. There's always stripes, but I mean, it usually takes stripes a crap load of time to be able to lower it. 
Let's throw out our first Ultra Ball, and let's just hope for the best. We've already caught a couple in the first balls, so, you know, I'm not expecting too much uh, out of these. I, it's probably going to take, um, you know, I don't know. I don't know what the rate, the catch rate is for Kyogre, but I'm guessing it's um, probably the average as the other legendaries. So it's probably going to be a little difficult, uh, as they always are. All right, let's go ahead and throw out another Ultra Ball then. Um, we have it in the yellow zone, you know... I'll probably end up having to use an Aerial Ace once it heals itself up with that Aqua Jet. Oh my gosh, we got it on the second ball. So there we go. We caught Kyogre in the yellow zone while sleeping. Fantastic. There we go. Oh, wow. That was very quick. Didn't think it would go that fast, but we have gone ahead and done it. Very nice for us. Uh, Kyogre, the Sea Bastion Pokemon. Uh, very cool. Let's go ahead and give it a nickname. Now, I just thought of this nickname at a random time. Now, if you guys know... The color blue is actually, you know, something in Spanish, and that's what I'm going to name after. I'm going to call it Azul. So there we go. Azul was transferred to Bill's PC, and we caught Kyogre. That was really, really easy. Well, hello. That was something you don't see every day. The Pokemon is Kyogre, a legendary Pokemon in the Hoenn myth about the shaping of that region. I see. I see. The Embedded Tower was built by the people from Hoenn. The tower that binds together the sea, the land, and the sky. Kyogre was not the only Pokemon described in the Hoenn myth. This place may still be hiding its secrets. The knowledgeable Pokemon professor may be able to tell you more when you show him Kyogre. Phew, there are so many connections between Pokemon and myths. See you around. So it seems like we have to show Kyogre to the Pokemon Professor, and I think by that they are talking about Professor Oak. Now, in order for us to go back to Professor Oak, we're gonna have to, you know, make our way back over there. So I'm gonna go ahead and just fly us to a little area where we can, uh, you know, deposit a couple Pokemon, because I want to mix things up a little bit since we need to bring Azul back into our team. I'll be back with you guys in a couple seconds. Okay, so as you can see, in my team now, there are two new Pokemon, Azul, which we just caught, and Groudon. Now, Groudon, as I told you guys before, cannot be caught in this game. The only way to get Groudon is to transfer it from another game, like Soul Silver. Now, th now that we have both of them, I went ahead and already transferred the Groudon, which makes things a lot easier for us. We can go to Pallet Town and start talking to this crazy Pokemon professor and hopefully he has some more knowledge for us about what's going on in the Embedded Tower and these weird legendary Hoenn starters. It's kind of cool having two legendaries in the team. Uh, it feels kind of kind of powerful to have those two there. And let's talk to Professor Oak. Hello, Rodri. The study of Pokemon never ends. It is such pure joy to work toward perfection. By the way, hmm, those Pokemon, they were at the Embedded Tower. They are Kyogre and Groudon, the Pokemon from the Hoenn myth. I never dressed, dreamed you would catch such Pokemon. You have proven yourself worthy. Congratulations. I would like to entrust this to you, Rodri. We obtained the Jade Orb. Now, the Jade Orb is actually going to allow us to go back. It says it resembles the orb that we got from uh, Mr. Pokemon. It has something to do with Rayquaza. Legend has it that the battle between Groudon and Kyogre shaped the lands and seas of Hoenn. Volcanic eruptions and giant waves are said to have completely changed the shape of the land there. But then Rayquaza came down to halt the battle. It is a Pokemon that rules the skies. If the Embedded Tower is related to Kyogre and Groudon, then going there with that Jada will surely make something happen. Okay, cool. So, as Professor Oak was saying, these three Pokemon have some weird connection together, and something magical is going to happen when we make our way to the Embedded Tower. I'm going to go back there quickly, and I'll see you guys there. All right, here we are, and let's go ahead and walk right into the Embedded Tower. Once again, it is automatically walking us, and I heard a yelling sound. And there it is, the legendary Pokemon, Rayquaza. Is what it's saying. I'm going to save because we are about to take on a very tough battle. Be back in two seconds. Okay, guys, so as you can see, I've gone ahead and put Aqui in front, and here we go! Rodri versus Rayquaza! We are going to be taking on the Hoenn Legendary Pokemon, the Master of the Sky. Rayquaza is level 50. I'm going to go ahead and send out Aqui. I have a strategy in store for this. Since we have K 
Kyogre and Groudon on our team, it seems like Rayquaza is feeling the aura and ready to give us a heck of a battle. I'm gonna go for the Yawn right away. I'm thinking that if we can get this Pokemon to sleep, it's gonna be the best thing for us because Rayquaza is a very, very powerful legendary Pokemon. Let's go ahead and switch out to Zuko. Zuko's gonna be able to put a lot of damage on it. Rayquaza is going for the Outrage. Fantastic! I'm pretty sure that for a level 50 Pokemon, Rayquaza is very, very strong. Thank goodness we got it asleep. Now, let's go ahead and put some serious damage on it. I'm thinking a flamethrower might be able to get it down to at least half health, or at least a little middle green barish. If we can get it around to that point, we could follow up with another one, and we just hit a crit on it! That changes plans a little bit, guys. That, that mixes things up a, a tiny bit. Now, let's just go for the Ultra Ball then. We were able to catch Kyogre in the yellow zone, so what's gonna stop us from catching Rayquaza in the same fashion? Okay, the Pokemon broke free. It might not be as easy as Kyogre was. Let's pull ourselves together, and let's think up of a strategy here. Maybe if we just keep throwing them at it, we'll be able to do this successfully. Now, things get tough because Rayquaza can actually use Rest as well. As you can see, wow, I predicted that one. Okay, Rayquaza uses Rest, which puts it back to full health. Now, this can either be good or bad for us, since the only person that can put Rayquaza to sleep is Aqui or itself. So, you know, it put itself to sleep. I'm gonna go with the flamethrowers. Let's just keep jamming some flamethrowers down its throat, cooking up some sky serpent or whatever it is, and hope that we can actually catch it one of these times. These legendaries, seriously, they seem to give me quite a bit of trouble, but it's always it's always quite fun uh, once we can actually come close to catching it. All right, it's asleep. I think we should go ahead and throw an Ultra Ball once again. Uh, this is our third one. Uh, we're not doing too bad, though. I actually thought it was going to be a little bit harder for us to weaken Rayquaza. I thought it was going to be able to pop out a little more. All right, it appeared to be caught once again. It woke up, and it used rest again. Now, I don't know how many rests Rayquaza actually has. I think it's a lot, but I'm not too sure. So it's going to be a matter of just weakening it down, hoping that it uses up all of its rest, and that we can take over from there. And, you know, just hope that we can actually catch it once we have it lowered and sleeping. Rayquaza is still asleep, which is good for our part. Let's just go ahead and keep flamethrowing it, and let's just keep this thing going. Now, Rayquaza, if you, you know, if you want to be a nice legendary, one of those peacekeepers, I'm telling you right now, we have two angry legendary Pokemon in my team. I have uh, Kyogre and Groudon, who are very, very mad. You know, it's your responsibility to calm them down, to, you know, tell them to, to stay at peace and to clear- Oh, we got it! Okay, we caught Rayquaza! Very cool! Didn't think we were gonna catch it that fast, and there we go! Uh, Rayquaza was caught. Its data is going to be added to the Pokedex. Uh, fantastic. It is the Sky High Pokemon. It is a Dragon Flying. Let's go ahead and give Rayquaza a nickname. You guys already saw that. I named Kyogre Azul, which means blue. So we're going to call this little Rayquaza Verde, which means green. And it was sent to the PC. With that, we have caught all of the legendary Pokemon in this game. We have Kyogre, Groudon, and Rayquaza, the three Hoenn legendaries, and now there is only one thing left for us to do. We're gonna go ahead and fly to Mount Silver, because that is where the last battle of this game is going to take place. If you guys have any tips on the final battle, let me know. In the next episode, guys, once and for all, purple meets red. Thank you guys so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next episode. Goodbye.